Welcome back to Fig and Farm at Home. I have been a teeny tiny bit missing in action the last couple of weeks, and today you're going to find out why. But I am back. I am so glad I am. I am recharged, ready to go, and I have a story to tell you. <laughs> okay, today we are talking all about taking bold action bold action in your home. And every once in a while, you need to take bold action in life in general, right? Think about a time when you took, you did something that was just out of character, something that was a little bit of a stretch for you, something that was a little uncomfortable. I have been this entire year taking stretches and leaps and bounds and pushing myself to be a little bit uncomfortable. Earlier this summer, I took a mastermind class that taught me a little bit more about how to run a business because I am a creative. First and foremost, I'm a creative. Before that, I was a teacher and I absolutely love to teach. That's why I'm here teaching you a couple times a week on the podcast. But this time I did something a little different and I did it actually yesterday and I had a tummy ache. You know the kind, the butterflies in your tummy, the one that you kind of have night sweats, the ones where you wake up in the middle of the night in anticipation and not excited anticipation, kind of the, oh no, what did I do anticipation? Are you ready to know what it is? Yeah, I decided in all of my wisdom to coach my teenage son's recreational soccer team. (laughs) I did that. Now, if you know me in real life, you know that I am a, an athlete by nature. I was a collegiate athlete and soccer was not my sport. I am still a coach. I absolutely love coaching kiddos in middle school. In about 45 minutes from now, in real time, I'm actually going to hang up my microphone. I'm going to go to the gym where it's nice and cozy and warm, where I get to hang out with 12 delightful teenage girls, and I get to teach them a sport I love, basketball. But yesterday, I took my very first step into the world of soccer. Now, here's the thing. It is bold. I still don't know all the rules. In fact, I have been a soccer mom now for about... 12 years, and I still don't know all the rules. (laughs) Oh boy. So would you come and I don't want to say misery, you know, shared misery is what what has that phrase go? There's misery in company. There's company in misery. That one. There's company in misery. Okay. I'm not miserable. I'm so glad I did it. I actually ended up having a lot of fun, but will you comment and tell me one bold thing that you've done before? You can come into my DMs. You can shoot me an email. You can come into my Facebook group. You can even find me on Facebook, wherever you find me. Would you just share with me one bold thing that you felt a little bit worried about that turned out okay? I need a little encouragement and I would love to hear from you. Okay, but today we are not talking about me as a soccer coach, that is yet to be seen. We are, though, talking about making a bold decision. When it's time to make a bold decision in your home, how to do it bravely, how to do it in such a way that you can walk like me onto the soccer field, head held high, faking it till I make it, knowing that it is all going to be okay. How do you do that in your home? That's what we're talking about today. Stick around. I'll see you on the other side. How many times have you found yourself at your favorite home decor store, browsing aimlessly for an item to spruce up your space, just to bring it home and then not quite like it? Or find that your effort didn't pay off the way that you imagined? That rug you bought? Too big, too small, or too brown? And the curtains? We don't need to go there. Or maybe we do, in this new Tuesday quick tip series, Know Before You Go, brought to you by all the mistakes I've made before, (laughs) and thankfully have learned from. Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating Goodwill shopping budget. And I learned a few things along the way and definitely made a few mistakes. But I am so excited that you're here learning how you can know before you go. So put down your credit card, grab a notebook and a pen, because you're definitely going to want to take notes. All right, friends, so you're ready to take bold action, or maybe you're not quite ready. Maybe you're still sitting on the fence and you're thinking, what, what what do I do? I'm so incredibly stuck. 
okay, we're going to break it all down today because there are times when maybe actually not taking the bold action is really the best course of action for you. And sometimes you need someone to kind of give you a little nudge and push you. I don't want to say over the cliff. That would be very sad, but you know what I mean push you into the pool. <laughs> Sometimes you need that little nudge. And so today, I hope that you will get a little discernment into knowing if that thing that you're thinking about doing, that bold move you're thinking about jumping on is actually worth it, the best move for you, or maybe some things to think about as you modify the plan even. So friends, this has been me in this last couple of weeks. This is why I have been a little MIA. I mentioned in the intro that I am a creative and every once in a while, and I have mentioned this before, but every once in a while, if you are a creative, you sometimes need to create in order to recharge your batteries. You need to create in order to get those juices flowing and to feel not only a sense of accomplishment, but that it just kind of fills you up. I recognize for me that creativity is a gifting that I've been given and I am so thrilled to have had it. I'm so thrilled that that painting or drawing or I don't know crafting just creating a general okay no music no don't get don't get your ideas convoluted here. I do not sing and I do not dance and I do not play any musical instrument although I wish so badly that I could. Not that kind of creating but the other kind. The the crafting and the seeing the vision and all of that. I'm it's a gift and I feel very thankful for that. But every once in a while when I am spending so much time pouring out and pouring into all of you giving you guys I hope the motivation, the tools, the wisdom, the courage to step forward in brave action for your own homes, sometimes that can be a little draining for me. And every once in a while I need to take a step back and do something creative for my own self. And so last week I did it. I did it and it was bold with a capital B. Bold with a capital all of the letters actually. And I'm going to walk you through the steps I took in order to finally decide because this bold action I took was actually a plan in the making or an idea brewing for a very, very long time. And I got stuck just like so many of you get stuck. I got stuck thinking, what if I hate it? What if I hate it? And really, that was the thing that was keeping me stuck. So let's break it down a little bit so that you know if you're in that same position, you want to take bold action. But what if you take the action and you hate it? What happens? And asking yourself that all by itself is fine, but we really don't know what the risk assessment is until we start asking a few more questions. So I have five steps that I walked through in order to finally decide to take the leap to paint my living room black. I did it. I went incredibly bold. And there were modifications I made along the way because as I was doing my own risk assessment, I was very aware of what would happen if I hated it. And I wanted to make sure that I had a plan B in case I needed to remediate or start all over after I recharged my batteries and needed to do another coat of paint. So here are five things to think about. All right. The first thing is to think about your why. What is the bold action first that you want to make? And why do you want to make it? Now, it is definitely noteworthy to talk about what bold is because bold for me was painting my living room black. That might be outlandish to you. That might be ludicrous to you. That might be silly, crazy, foolish, whatever adjective you might think that is for you. For me, because it was in my own home, it was bold. It was courageous. It was something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So what is your bold move? Your bold move might be replacing a couch. It might be saying goodbye to a hand-me-down that you've had for years and you've felt obligated to hang on to because it's still attached to the giver somehow. You might hurt the giver's feelings by removing it. Maybe your bold move is hanging curtains. Maybe your bold move is getting a new area rug or getting an area rug in general. 
Maybe your bold move is rearranging the furniture. Maybe your bold move is bringing in a plant. All of our bold moves, whatever they are, are really a matter of of individual perspective, right? I am not going to say if your bold move is bringing in a plant, how, well, that's silly. You should have brought in a plant like 15 years ago. Are you kidding? No, your bold move is, your bold move, no matter what it is, is respected here. So what is it for you? Get that in your mind and let's start asking these questions. So your bold move, you've got it. Why do you want to make the bold move? What is it? What is the why behind your desire to get the area rug, to remove the area rug, to bring in the plant, to paint your wall, to hang the curtains, to remove the curtains, whatever it is, why do you want to do it? And this needs to be dissected even more because sometimes, of course, well, because it will look good or I think it will look good. Sure, that's great. Why else? In the case of plants, is it because you have a desire to learn how to take care and nurture living things other than your children or your pets inside of your home? Fantastic. What a great idea. Absolutely. What a noble step. If it is to lay an area rug because you've heard that possibly potentially area rugs create a boundary, they anchor your furniture, they create coziness, they create layers and texture and depth and all those things, and you want to give it a try. Okay. Wonderful. That's a great reason, a great why for this bold move you want to take? Is it because you have friend coming over who you haven't seen since before COVID and you just are thinking, gosh, this is what a first impression is going to make is seeing this home that I, this wall that I don't like. And I just want them to, I don't know, I want it to be snazzy, like me putting on a new, a new outfit. Now, Whatever your why is, just like whatever your bold is, you need to ascertain if that is a good why, if that is a good enough reason to make the bold move, if that's a good enough reason to invest the time, the effort, the money, whatever you're investing into it. If it is a vanity metric, well, because I I need to gather about two more Instagram followers <laughs> or whatever. Is that your why? Think about what it is and if it is a good enough why for you. And only you can answer that. Here is my why. <laughs> I did a little math for this one. On my li- in my living room, we have a pretty small living room and it's pretty open concept. It leads right into um, the kitchen and we have a bar. We don't have a an island, which sadness for me. I wish I had an island, but I don't. And we transformed years ago, we transformed our what would have been an Eden kitchen, a very small Eden kitchen, we transformed that into just kind of an open seating area where we built, we have a a bench seating with reclaimed wood and two bookcases that kind of flank the bench and the window. Very sweet. It's extra seating for when we're having um, a soccer watching party or something like that. It's extra seating and it just kind of creates a cozy little nook that you might not have in a builder grade home. But the living room wall, (laughs) we had had pretty much the same since September 13th, 2011. Yes, I did go back and I looked at my calendar with the date we moved in. Now we did make a few changes. We painted the walls. They were kind of a, I don't even know what color of green, a green that Kelly green, maybe they were like a Kelly green and we painted them once, we painted them twice, and I'd been living with these walls that were a light gray, a very, very light gray, you can't tell sometimes if it's gray or white, for a long time. And it was fine. My husband built some shelves in this little alcove we had, we put a computer desk there, and that computer desk arrived about September 26th (laughs) of 2011. And I know this because it was the day my first kiddo went to kindergarten. And you may be asking why these dates matter. Let me tell you. Because for 4,140 days, I have been living with a wall, part of the living room, that I tolerated. And then I grew to dislike. And then that dislike grew to kind of hatred. I hated that wall. I didn't like the desk that we had chosen. We chose it primarily as a 
a placeholder until we could really let the home tell us what we wanted to do with the space, I suppose, or knew better. And we lived with it for 4,140 days. That's a lot of days. And over the course of time, I kept thinking, oh, what, what if we put in a new desk here? What if we changed out this here? What if we painted the wall here? Lots of ideas ruminated over the last co- couple of years. But my why, why I finally decided to change it was because I couldn't stand it. I couldn't. Every time I walked into the room, I hated it. I didn't think it was a reflection of me. And we spend time in here. We have people over in here. We have parties. We have gatherings. We have cozy nights in. And it didn't feel cozy. It felt incomplete. And I didn't like the way that that felt. So I took the opportunity. That is my why. I Sometimes that is a good enough why. Sometimes you can't stand living in the space is a good enough why. Sometimes I just have been living with this for 4,000 days and I want a change is a good enough why. But you do need to know your why so that you can make a wise investment. Okay, number two. And this goes without saying, and so many of you already do this naturally, but I want you to take it a step further. And that is to think about the financial cost. Yeah, we naturally do that, right? We think about what it would cost maybe to take the bold action, to buy the couch, to buy the rug, to paint the wall. How much would it cost to do that? But going beyond that, what would it cost to fix it? Really, if you hate it, if you got it and you hated it, you took that bold step, that bold leap, that action, and now you hate it. Financially speaking, what would it cost to fix it? Is it return shipping? Is it a drive to a store three hours away to return it in store? Is it a new can of paint? What is it? For me and my black living room wall, the cost shifted dramatically once I started thinking about step number three or tip number three or cautionary tale number three, whatever you want to call it, the third thing, which is the physical cost. And I'm going to tell you how that played out in my own living room, but the physical cost needs to be in consideration as well. What physically needs to be done in order to take that bold leap? Are you building something? And is that something in your wheelhouse? Can you manage it or do you need to hire out? Or do you need to entice someone who might be able to help you? And how are you going to be able to entice them? And then just like you did with the financial cost, if you hate it, if you don't like it, if you don't like the change that you made, what physical considerations need to be thought about in order to fix it, in order to remediate it, in order to put it back, in order to make it better? Because if you take that bold leap and you take that bold step and you're not entirely sure you're taking that risk because that is in fact what bold boldness means, right? You're taking courageous, confident action. But sometimes when we do that, we fall a little bit. So here's what happened for me in my black living room. I thought about the financial cost. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to do to that wall, I kept thinking, you know, I want to have a textured wall and a wood treatment wall. And that costs money. I might have a few supplies in the garage, not a biggie. But as I was thinking about what I needed to do to prep the wall, I knew that I needed to skim coat it in order to give it a flat surface, remove the texturizing that naturally comes with a builder grade home, put the wood treatment up and then paint it, caulk it and then paint it. So kind of a lot of steps. Financially speaking, It didn't feel like it was going to be too much of a burden. What made me modify my plan and my bold action-taking step was that I didn't like the idea of what would happen if I had to remediate it. It wasn't necessarily the cost, even though I might have been out $100. But the thing that I would have had to do in order to create the bold action in the first place, skim coat the wall, put up the wood treatment, caulk it, paint it. Now reversing, if I didn't like it, if I actually hated it, I would have to remove the wood, remove the caulking. I would have to retexturize, which felt like a pain in the behind. And then I would have to repaint it. That felt like too much. That was a 
hard stop, nope, modifying my plan, I am not going to do that. What was the next best thing for me in order to continue on my bold action-taking journey? Just paint the wall. Remove any inhibitors that could be more work than I wanted to. So for me, I found the paint. Now bonus, I found leftover paint from a donated gallon of black paint that was left over from a project I volunteered on a couple years ago and the paint was still good. Bonus, it was free. It was something I had in the garage and it allowed me to take that risk without any financial obligation unless I had to remediate it if I didn't like it. Okay, not so bad. So understanding the risk assessment, really financially and the physical labor, not just with what what it would take in order to make the change, but what it would take in order to remediate it if you actually don't care for the bold move that you just made. All right, tip number four. Are you ready? Tip number four, and I did this with my own with my own black living room wall, is to ask a trusted source. Run it by a friend. Run it by someone who you admire their opinion. You ask them for advice all the time. They have maybe an eye that you don't necessarily have and you appreciate the way that they approach maybe their home decorating or you approach the way that they make bold action. Even if it's not necessarily in home decorating, it's like a bold action and they're someone who you look to who has kind of trailblazed for you, who's walked that path and has not been afraid to fix it if it doesn't go quite as planned. Ask that friend, ask them their opinion. What do you think? Can you help me? What, how do you decide when you're making a decision that is kind of risky? How do you make the decision if you don't know, if you don't trust that it's going to work out or you don't trust yourself that you're going to like it, or if you're too nervous to even take that step, what do you do? Get their advice. And if your friend happens to be design savvy, if your friend happens to have a little bit of design sensibility, ask them, tell them your plan, tell them your idea, see if they have anything to contribute to it in order to help you maybe eliminate some of the risks before, or help you know that they're not even risks to begin with. I did that with my sisters that morning when I was thinking, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. What if, what if? And I sat on the fence and I hemmed and I hawed just like so many of you do every time you try to make a decision. I sat there and I thought, what if I don't like it? Because not only did I paint the wall, I painted the fireplace too. And the fireplace was a very warm kind of honey maple wood. And so many of you might think, oh, you did what? (laughs) You painted wood? Yep, mic drop. I painted the wood. Why? Because I hated it. Because every time I walked into it, I couldn't stand it. And it wasn't necessarily the wood tone I was going for. Not only that, it clashed with the coffee table I absolutely love. It was bringing down my room in a way that was like a bully. All those bullies I've talked to you about, it was bringing it down. I had a bully in the room and it was time to do something about that big bully that Many of you might think this is pretty as it was, and that's okay. But for me and my house and my perspective, I hated it. Not only did I paint the fireplace, I painted the tile and I made it look like it was marble. You might not know if you take a peek at those pictures I'm sharing with you on Instagram. You might not know that it's not real marble. What's the result? I love it. I absolutely love it. It's one of those things, and I have done this before, where I've thought, why didn't I do this sooner? But back to asking a trusted source. I called my sisters and I said, what do you think? Or I texted them, what do you think? I'm thinking about painting it black. What do you think? Go for it. Do it. Awesome. Yes. Neither of them asked me what was the worst that can happen. I was already doing that. I already made the risk assessment, but they kind of gave me a thumbs up. They've seen me transform spaces before. They've watched and they've encouraged and they said yes. So the fifth thing, what is the step in order to take bold action? To just do it, to do it, just do it. And if it's you're anything like me, you might sit back and realize, why did it take me so long. Why did it take me so long to take that action knowing I knew that I didn't like that fireplace for years, years, not quite 4,140 days, but 
I mean, maybe 2,140 days, a very long time. I've known for a very long time that that fireplace was not something I wanted to look like it was. And it took me a very long time to get myself out of inaction and into bold, courageous, confident decision-making. But I had to do some risk-taking. So here's what I want you to do. Whatever that bold thing is that you've been sitting on the fence for a while, whatever that is, I want you to ask yourself these questions. I want you to go through the same exercise I did. The first one, ask yourself why. Why is it you're wanting to make the change in the first place? And it doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be profound. It doesn't have to be really anything that has a five-point plan or laid out in paragraph form. It doesn't have to be anything like that, anything formal. But it should be more than, eh, I'm, it's a whim. Eh, I don't know. I want to, I'm bored. It should be something that you can pinpoint. Number two, assess the financial commitment. And not just the financial commitment to the decision, but the financial commitment or the potential financial commitment to the decision should you need to remediate it. Do the same thing with number three, and that is the physical cost. What do you have to do? Do you have to build something? Do you have to move something? Do you have to drive anywhere to pick it up? Do you have to, what is it that you physically have to do in order to make the change? And then should you not like it, what is the physical contribution or cost that you need to do in order to remediate it? Number four, ask a friend, ask someone who you trust and love and who trusts and loves you, ask them their opinion. And number five, just do it. Be brave. You can do it. All right, friends, I hope that inspired you and encouraged you to take bold, courageous action. And if you are thinking about taking bold, courageous action in one room in your home and you're thinking, you know what, I wish I would have jumped earlier when Danny offered the Home Design 101 course in winter. I wish I would have jumped guess what? It is back. We are starting March 30th, another 10-week round of Home Design 101 goodness, where I teach you the process from beginning to end, how you can design a room that you absolutely love. Maybe this is your bold, courageous action. And if it is, you can go to the link in the show note and get yourself on the wait list. Registration opens March 16th. But maybe you are ready for a tiptoe. Maybe you're thinking, you know, I'm not ready for the bold leap, but I may be ready for the peekaboo into that bold action. (laughs) I invite you to come and join me on a free one-hour workshop, live workshop, where I teach you four steps to creating a home that you can't stop gushing about. That is on March 16th, and the link to register for the workshop is in the show notes. Register, come on over, watch and participate in the live workshop, learn a thing or two, and then maybe you'll be ready for the bold action. Or maybe you'll just be ready to keep on learning and to posture yourself in a way that you are going to keep on plugging away itty bitty steps at a time. Whatever it is for you, I hope that you are encouraged, inspired, delighted, and I hope that you come and check out my bold black wall. You can find it over on Instagram at Fig and Farm. All right, friends, until next time, I hope you're well. See you soon. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.